Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome once again to another CUBE Conversation from our studios here in beautiful Palo Alto, California. Today we've got a really special guest. We're going to be talking about AI and some of the new technologies that are making that even more valuable to business. And we're speaking with Roy Kim, who's the lead for AI solutions at okay. Pure Storage. Roy, That's welcome right. to theCUBE. Thank you for having me, very excited. Well, uh, so let's start by just, how, how does one get to be a lead for AI <laughs> solutions? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, first of all, there aren't that many AI anything in the world today, um, but I did uh, spend eight years at NVIDIA helping build out their AI practice. Um, and I'm fairly new to storage. I'm about 11 months into pure storage. So uh, that's how you get into it. You, you cut your teeth on, on real stuff and start at NVIDIA. Well, let's talk about some real stuff. I have a thesis, I want to throw it by you uh, and, and see what you think about it. Um, the thesis that I have, Wikibon has been at the vanguard of talking about the role that Flash is going to play. Flash memory, flash storage systems are going to play in changes in the technology industry. We were one of the first to really talk about it. And uh, we believe, I believe, very strongly that if you take a look at all the changes that are happening today with AI and the commercialization of AI and even big data and some right. other things that are happening, a lot of that can be traced back directly to the transition from memory, mm -hmm. which had you know, ten, you know, very, very long lag times, millisecond speed lag times, right. to flash, which is microsecond speed. Right. And when you go to microsecond, you can just do so much more with data. Right. And it just seems as though that transition from um, from disk to flash has kind of catalyzed a lot of this change. Would you right. agree with that? Yeah, that transition from disk to flash was the fundamental transition within the storage industry. So the, the fundamental thing is that, that data is now fueling this whole AI revolution, and I would argue that the big data revolution with Hadoop, Spark, and all that is really the essence underneath it is that you use data to, to get insight. Right? And so disks were really fundamentally designed to store data and not to, to deliver data. Right? So if you think about it the way that it's, it's, it's uh, designed is that it's really just to store as much data as possible. Flash is the, the other way around. It's to deliver data as fast as possible. And so that transition is fundamentally the reason why this is happening today. Oh, it's good to be right. <laughs> yeah, you are definitely right. So the second observation that I would make is that we're seeing, uh, a, and it makes perfect, it makes perfect sense, a move to start, or trend to start, move more processing closer to the data, right. especially, as you said, on flash systems that are capable of delivering data so much faster. That's right. Is that also starting to happen in your experience? That's right, so this idea that, that you take a lot of this data and move it to, to compute as fast as possible. Or, or move the compute even closer to closer the data. Closer to the data, um, and, and the reason for that, and AI really exposes that as, as much as possible because um, AI is this idea that you have these really powerful processors that need as much data as quickly as possible to turn that around into neural networks that, that give you insight. Right? And so, um, and that actually leads to what I'll be talking about, but the, the, th the thing that we built, uh, this thing called ARI, is the idea that you, you pull compute and storage and networking all into this compact uh, design so that, that there is no bottleneck, that, that data lives close to compute and delivers that, that fastest performance uh, for your neural network training. So let's talk about that a little bit. If we combine your background in NVIDIA, uh, the fact that you're currently a pure, the role that Flash plays right. in delivering data faster, the need for uh, that faster delivery in AI applications, right. and now the possibility of moving uh, GPUs and related types of technologies even closer to the data. Right. You guys have created a partnership with NVIDIA. Right. What exactly? Tell us a little bit more about ARI. Right, so this week we announced ARI. So ARI is uh, the industry's first AI uh, complete platform for enterprises. Um, what AI, we found, ready. AI ready infrastructure for enterprises. Uh, that's where ARI comes from. And, um, and it really brought um, NVIDIA and Peer together because we uh, saw a lot of these trends within customers that are uh, really cutting their teeth in building AI infrastructure and it was hard. Right? There's a lot of um, intricate details that go into building AI infrastructure. And, uh, and we have lots of mutual customers with NVIDIA, and what we found is that there's some best practices that we can pull into a single solution, uh, whether it's hardware and software, uh, so that the rest of the enterprises can just get up and running quickly. And that is, is represented in ARI. Well, it's, uh, we know it's hard, because if it was easy, it would have been done a long time ago. So tell us a little bit about, specifically, about the, the types of technologies that are 
embedded within ARI. Yeah. How does it work? Right. So if you think about what's required to build um, deep learning and AI, and AI practice, you start from data scientists, and then you go into frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch, you may have heard of them. Mm -hmm. uh, then you go into the tools, and then uh, GPUs, InfiniBand typically is networking of choice, uh, and then Flash, right? So these um, are all the components, these all, are the all the components parts that, that you have access to. That's right, that's right. And, and so enterprises today, they have to build all of this together by hand to, to uh, get their data sciences ready for AI. Um, what ARI represents is everything but data scientists. So start from, from the, the tools like TensorFlow all the way down to Flash, all built and tuned into a single solution so that all really an enterprise need to do is give it to a data scientist and they get up and running. So uh, we've done a fair amount of research on this at Wikibon and we discovered that uh, one of the reasons why big data and AI related projects have not been as successful as mm -hmm. they might have been is precisely because so much time was spent trying to understand yeah. the underlying technologies in the infrastructure required to process it. And even though it was often easy to procure this stuff, right. it took a long time to integrate, a long time to test, a long time to master, before we could bring application orientations yeah. to bear on the problems. So what you're saying is you're slicing all that off right. so that folks that are trying to do artificial intelligence related workloads can have a much better time to value. I That's got that right. right? That's right, so think about just within that stack, everything that, that I just talked about, um, InfiniBand, right? Enterprises are like, what is InfiniBand? GPU, I'm relative, a lot of people know what GPU is, but uh, enterprise will, will say that they've never deployed GPUs. Um, think about, TensorFlow, PyTorch, these are tools that are necessary to data scientists, but enterprises are like, oh my goodness, what is that? Right, so, so all of this is really foreign to the enterprises, and they're spending months and months trying to figure out what it is, and how to deploy it, how to design it, and... and how to make it work together. How to make it work together. And, and, um, and so what NVIDIA and Pure decided to do is take all the learnings that we had from these uh, pioneers, uh, trailblazers within the enterprise industry, bring all those best practices into a single solution so that enterprises don't have to worry about InfiniBand or Ethernet or, or GPUs or Scale-Out Flash or, or TensorFlow. It just works. So it sounds like it's a solution that's specifically designed and delivered to increase the productivity of data scientists as they right. try to do data science. That's right. So tell us a little bit about some of those impacts. What, what kinds of early uh, insights about more productivity uh, with uh, with data science, are you starting to see as a consequence of this approach? Yeah, you know, you'll be surprised that that uh, most data scientists doing AI today, when they kick off a job, it takes a month to finish. So think about that. When when someone, I, I'm a data scientist, I come in on Monday, uh, early February, I kick off a job, I go on vacation for four weeks, I come back and it's still running. What do you mean by kicking off a job? It means um, I, I start this, this this workload that helps train neural nets. Okay. Right. It requires uh, GPUs to start computing and, and the TensorFlow to work and the data to get it consumed. So you're talking about it takes weeks to run a job that does relatively simple things in a data science yeah. sense, like train a model. Train a model it takes a month, um, and so the scary thing about that is, is you really have 12 tries a year to get it right. Just imagine that. So, um, and, and that's not something that we want enterprises to, to suffer through. And so what ARI does is it cuts uh, what used to take a month down to a week. Now, that's amazing if you think about it. What used to, they only had 12 tries to, in a year, now they have 48 tries in a year. Transformative, right? Um, the way that that worked is we, in ARI, if you look at it, there's actually four servers uh, with FlashBlade. We figured out a way to, to have that job run across all four servers to give you four X the throughput. Think that that's easy to do, but it actually is not. And so you parallelized we're doing it. it. We paralyzed it. And, and, it, and, and that is not necessarily easy to do. These it's are not, not easy These to do. are often not particularly simple jobs. But that's why no one's doing it today. But if you think about it, going back to your point, uh, it's like the individual who takes performance enhancements drugs so they can get one more workout right. than the competition and that lets them hit another 10, 15 home runs, which leads to millions of extra dollars. Yeah. You're kind of seeing something similar. Right. You, you used to be able to get okay. only 12 workouts a year, and now you can do 48 workouts. Which business is going to be stronger and more successful as a result? That's a great analogy. You know, another way to look at it is, uh, a typical data scientist probably makes about half a million dollar a year. 
uh, what if you get 4x the productivity out of that person? So you get the return of $2 million of return out of that $500,000 you know, investment you make. That's, that's another way of saying performance and struck for that data scientist. But I honestly think it's even, it's even more than that because there's a, there's a lot of other support staff yeah. that are today doing a lot of the data science grunt work, let's call it. Right. You know, lining up the pipelines, building the mm -hmm. testing pipelines, making sure that they run, testing sources, testing sinks, and this is reducing the need for infrastructure types of tasks. Right. So you're getting more productivity out of the data scientist, but you're also getting more productivity out of all the people who heretofore were, yeah. you were spending right. on doing this type of stuff, when all they were doing is just taking care of the infrastructure. Yeah. Is that right? That's exactly right. We have a, a customer uh, in the UK, one of the world's largest hedge fund companies uh, that's publicly traded. And what they told us is that with, with Flashblade, and not necessarily every customer at this time, but they're actually doing AI with, with Flashblade today with, at Pure, uh, from Pure. And what they said is, with Flashbit, they actually got two engineers that was full time taking care of infrastructure. Now they're doing data science. Okay. Right. You're, to your point, that they don't have to worry about infrastructure anymore because of the simplicity of of what we bring from Pure. And so, so now they're working on models that help them uh, make more money. So that half million dollars a year that you were spending on eight data scientists and a couple of administrators, yeah. that you were getting two million dollars, that you're now getting two million dollars return, you can now take those administrators and have them start doing more data science right. without necessarily tr paying them more. Right. It's a little secret. <laughs> uh, but you're now getting four, five, six million dollars in return as That's a consequence right. of the system. That's right. That's so right. as you think about where Ares is now, or Ares is now, and you think about where it's going to go, give us a sense of kind of how this uh, presages new approaches to thinking about problem solving as it relates right. to AI and other types of things. Well, one of the beauty about AI is that it's always evolving. Right? What used to be what they call CNNs uh, as the most popular model now is GANs or genetic. CNN stands for? Uh, convolutional neural nets. Okay. Uh, typically used for image uh, processing. Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, people are using things like gen generative adversarial networks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is putting two networks uh, against each other to, to, um, to improve one another. See which one works and is more right. productive. Right, and so, and that happened in, in a matter of, of a couple of uh, years, and so, AI is always changing, uh, always evolving, always getting better, and so it really gives us an opportunity to think about how does AI evolve to keep up and, and bring the best state of the technology to the data scientists. So there is actually uh, boundless opportunities to. Well, and even AI. if you talk about GANs or generative adversarial networks, networks uh, the, al the basic algorithms have been in place for 15, 20, maybe yeah. even longer, yeah. 30 years. Yeah. But the technology wouldn't allow it to work. Right. And so, really, what we're talking about is a combination of deep understanding of how some of these algorithms work that's been around for a long time, mm -hmm. and the practical ability to get business value out of them. Right. And right. that's kind of why this is such an exploding thing, right. is because there's been so much knowledge about how this stuff, or what this stuff could do, that now we can actually apply it to some of right. these complex business problems. That's exactly right. You know, I, I tell people that, that um, the promise of big data has been around for a long time. And people have been talking about big data you know, for 10, 20 years. Uh, AI is really the first killer application of big data. Hadoop's been around for a long time, but we know that people have struggled with Hadoop. Uh, Spark it has been great, but what AI does is it really uh, taps into the big data um, platform and, and, and translates that to the insight, it, w whatever the data is. Um, video, uh, text, you know, all kinds of data can, you can use AI on. And so that, that really is the reason why there's a lot of excitement around AI. It really is a first killer application for, for big data. Well, I would say it's even more than that. It's, it's an application, but it's also, we, we think there's a bifurcation. We think that we're seeing a, an increased convergence inside the infrastructure, which is offering up greater specialization mm -hmm. in AI. So AI is an application, but it also will be uh, the combination of tooling, especially for data scientists, will be the will be the new platform by which you build these new classes of applications. Right. So you won't even know you're using AI, you'll right. just build an application that has those capabilities, right? Right, right. that's right. I mean, I think um, it's, it's as technical as that or as simple as when you use your, your iPhone and you're talking to Siri, you don't know that you're, you're talking to AI. It's, it's just part of your daily life. Or, you know, looking at having it recognize your face. I mean, right. that, is, that is processing, the algorithms have been in place for a long time, right. but 
it was only recently that we had the hardware that was capable of doing it. Right. And Pure Storage is now bringing a lot of that to the enterprise through this relationship with NVIDIA. That's right, so ARI does represent all the, the best of uh, AI infrastructure from all of our customers. Uh, we pulled it into what ARI is, and um, we're, we're both really excited to, to uh, give it to all of our customers. So I guess it's a good time to be the lead for AI solutions at Pure Storage, huh? <laughs> That's right, it, there's, a, there's a ton of work, um, but a lot of excitement. Um, you know, this is really the first time a storage company um, was spotlighted and became, on, and, and went on the, the grand stage of AI, right? Um, there's always been NVIDIA, there's always been Google, Facebook, and, and and uh, you know hyperscalers, but um, when was the last time a storage company was was highlighted uh, on the the grand stage of AI? I don't think it'll be the last time. No, no. Uh, and and you know it's to your point that that um, that this transition from from disk to flash is is that that big transition in the industry, and and uh, fate has it that Pure Story ha Pure Storage has the the best. Uh, flash play solution for, for deep learning. So I got one more question for you. So we've got you know, a number of people that are watching the video, uh, watching us talk. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them very interested in AI, trying to do AI. You've got a fair amount of experience. What are the most interesting problems that you think we should be focusing on with AI? Wow, that's, that's a good one. Well, there's so many. I mean, other, than you other than using storage better. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, there's so many applications. Just think about, um, Customer experience, like just one of the most frustrating things for a lot of people is when they dial in and and, and they have to go through five different prompts to to get to the right person, um, and uh, that area alone could use a lot of just intelligence in the system, right? And and I think by the time they actually speak to a real live person, they're just frustrated and and the the customer experience is poor. So that's one area I know that there's a lot of um, uh, research in and how does AI uh, enhance that experience. Um, so, and in fact, one of our customers uh, is Global Response, um, and and they they um, are a call center uh, services company as, as as well as an offshoring company, and um, and they're doing exactly that. They're they're using AI to to understand uh, the sentiment of the caller and and give a, a better experience. And all that's, all that's predicated on the ability to do the delivery. So yeah. I, I'd like to see AI be used to sell AI. <laughs> all right, so Roy Kim, who's the lead of AI solutions at uh, Pure Storage. Roy, thank you very much for being on theCUBE and talking to us about ARI and the evolving relationship between hardware, specifically storage, and new classes of business solutions powered by AI. Well, thank you for inviting me. And again, I'm Peter Burris, and once again, you've been watching theCUBE. Talk to you soon.